Hello and welcome to this Wingate 7 sneak peek series video. In this video we're going to have a look at how you can use Wingate 7's innovative new policy framework to build your own anti-spam and grey listing policy. This is actually a policy that we use in our office for incoming email and it's working so well that it's currently our only anti-spam solution. Our incoming message handling uses two policies, an SMTP message handler and a spam check grey list policy. The SMTP message handler policy is called whenever the SMTP server registers a message received event. This is a fairly simple policy that is used to accept or deny incoming emails based on their whitelist or blacklist status. It logs the action and then either allows or rejects the email. One of the elements in our policy builder gives us the ability to call another policy. In other words, we pass the event that we're processing into that policy for further processing. In this case, when the email is passed through this policy, we call the SMTP spam filter policy. SMTP spam filter checks various parts of the incoming email and compares them against lists that we've created, and also provides grey listing. Grey listing, if you're not familiar with the term, is where incoming emails are rejected with a temporary error, the idea being that a legitimate email server will try to resend the email. Let's have a closer look at those policies now. The first check in our SMTP message handler policy is to see whether the email is from a trusted sender. This refers to the trust policy configured in the email server settings. As you can see we trust authenticated users and all internal users, but we distrust any external users. If the sender is trusted then we add them to our whitelist database with an SQL insert query. If the sender is not trusted we check their IP address against an IP whitelist this is a simple check against a list that we have configured. If the sender isn't whitelisted, we check to see if they're blacklisted, which is another list check. The next step is a check on whether they should be trusted, and this is a check against a list of friendly domains. Finally, we check if they're already in our whitelisted database, and if not, then we call the spam filter policy. When you call another policy, you can choose from policies that are relevant to the event that you're processing, and you can choose which point of the call policy you're going to start from. Looking at the spam filter policy, we can see that there is no event to start this policy. And most policies will start with an event, but we don't need an event here because it is called specifically from another policy. The first step in this policy is to see whether the policy is enabled, as it can be turned on or off from the dashboard. Next we check the subject against a list and this is just a list of common spam subject lines that we've built up. There are several more list checks for the from address, return path and language, and failure against any of these checks results in the email being rejected. Use grey listing is another switch which can also be turned on or off from the dashboard. The is grey listed check is a database lookup for email that has previously been added to the grey list database. If the email is already there, and is older than five minutes then we update the record to show it has been allowed and we permit delivery. If the email is not already in our database it is added or if it is not old enough then its record is updated to show that it has already been counted. The log is updated and the email is rejected with a message to say please try sending again in 10 minutes. As you can see it's a reasonably complex process but the flowchart policy builder makes it very straightforward to see how it works. Streamlining these policies for performance is also easy. We can see that this policy has had 26 hits and 42% of them have failed at the check subject element. We want the highest hit policy elements at the top of the policy so that an email that is going to fail will fail out as quickly as possible. Looking at average overhead of 19 microseconds, we can see that this policy is not performing too badly. So there you have a look at how you can use the Wingate 7 policy framework to build your own spam filter. For more information, please visit wingate7.com. Thanks for watching.